you know, Coop himself is so consistent that he was able to get to the top 10 or top 15 yesterday. I know it was in heats, but he was able to get that far without a single victory royale. So long as you're consistent, long as you can get to in game, like, ooh, nice shots here from King Magic. But long as you get to in game, like an Arkham and Stretch, who were able to make it to a full rotating circles throughout the entire run of their previous Dream Hat tournaments. Watching Hawkton right now, too all the way over at Rickety Rick. Sometimes when I see people in this POV and we switch to them fast, it looks like they're on that pontoon. Once again, leading forward with the charge pump and another one to connect with. It's easy claps for him. A caddy corner, P90 is gonna be the one pushing in as well. Has the vault though, he's crouched for over, so CRR does not know that he's here. The weapon switch will be heard. And now a fight is about to break out. He is cornered, boxed with the edit. And it's not going to be enough for the movement of Sierra. Or he's going to be taken out and deleted from this game. Played NA East this weekend, was able to advance the semis where he finished out of the top 200. But now we have an ambush play. You hear the creak of the door. You better watch out from behind your back. And gets disrespected with the pickaxe. Send right back to the lobby. Yikes. That is a nice upgrade, though. Yes. Legendary charge shotgun. Every single type of item that's available in this meta, choosing peppers over the crash pads. Gonna be interesting in seeing if it pays off. Leo the crack versus Taysom right now, and although Taysom's very low, he had a chance Ooh. for a second. Leo takes him out. Because he had an answer for everything that Nick Merckx was doing. And now we're seeing that some players are having answers for rotations. In the interview that we had with Coop, ooh, that's a quick answer in itself. That's a nice snipe there from uh, Bry there with the nice hunting rifle. What I was going to say is that, is, my, is he going to go for back-to-back? -back? Oh, my goodness. A little bit of time, a little bit of leeway to drop some more shots back. That crash pad is going to be able to open up that box for Usabi to actually get sniped from a hunting rifle. So getting attacked by season three in total, Usabi goes down. And He's trying to get a, you know, get a piece in there, a ramp or a cone. You seen that? I like you seeing that a lot of, uh, he's putting the cones by his feet himself as a way to preemptively counter that. What a, what a nice catch right there with that blue tack. 72 points is a strong start. Flowist right now with 90 points. Is going to be a little bit of trouble. 60, I feel like, is what a lot of that top 100, at least the top 20, hit over in confidence tries. And he just caught up to maybe in his second game. So we'll see if he can make a little bit more nice. of it. Those are five easy points. Nice patience there. But he's a part now of a much bigger story. Look at that mini map. There's so many people who could get involved with this fight fast. He has to be very careful as to when he makes edits and makes moves. Oz will be kind of right there. The risk, though, when you have this type of free space is if one person gets too aggressive, you're forced to fight and really hold your spot down. There's not going to be a mountain blocking you. There's not going to be many other builds as one fight really just gets wrapped up back here. If Oz picks this up, it's going to be so unfortunate for the other player. Oz now can just move in, knows this next opponent is so low. All far. All far with just 50 HP, has kills in the crash pad, but I don't think has the time or position to be able to pop any of these without getting pressured crash padding way back into the storm trying to find a way around but another sight line is going to be opened up for people to beam him right in oz might even dive straight in or at least push forward to look for these next three five points remember he hasn't touched a single shot onto all far just yet he just needs one little ar sprayer all far will just get taken out by the storm that is five points no one gets in the lobby the stinks are it's pushing over. him back and back, and he does not have enough health as Aztec's TJ is putting so much pressure. But Bry is here to fight, and that's what the pro players do. They're not afraid. They don't care how much HP to have. 4 HP, and now it's going to get up to 54 HP. And TJ, all he has to do is keep up the pressure, but I think TJ is using this pressure as a rotation. He turns and fires, tries to get the elimination, and now you have to be careful. And now the rest of the lobby is paying attention. Sometimes when you tune into a new POV, you're seeing it right now happen. Some builds might not actually place. There are walls around, so Huddy is making the right play right now. Just focus on the wall he's trying to take. That is the real story. There is brick encasing all around him. The test, though, is trying to move up and around. Trapped inside. There is that wall finally rendering in. And the test, as a trade, getting sent back to the lobby. Gets rendered out as well. And we're taking a look at it. And luckily for the players, the... So the, the, they have to be mindful of that. The puzzle is about to reveal itself. 
And for the players who are going to try to hug as much as possible the high side of it. So naturally, the congestion, no matter what the rotation is, it's going to be on this part of the mountain. The elevation is strong, and you do not want to go down to the circle all the way down near the beach. Because if the circle pulls back up, you're going to be in dangerous situations. As Mazin puts in a big time hit in Jira and sends him right out of Dirty Docks. Not deep in the heart of Texas. I may have got a lot of our Texas people out there with that one, but... There it is. He's going to clear out a landing pad. Launches right in as Huddy and Leo right now is in the thick of it, into the throes of this fight. But ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have some crazy box fight here, as Shio did point out, considering that you're going to see so much fights in long, like last longer, considering that they're going to have to be able to refresh their builds as well. So I'm excited here for the strong finisher, and Huddy is going to do some work, and Leo is putting in some work. But look at the lobby. x Flash is still up. You see other notable names. we got... Polaris is baby in the house. Rambo is here and Jamside are all up and Flois are fighting in today in this fight. And the difference is in Leo and Huddy's kind of game style right now. Leo's owned a lot of this entire build the entire time. He has a fuel for the whole area. As a result, is able to get a lot of these free fast eliminations and work with a lot more loot. Huddy though can put himself into a better position, not be in a spot to get many eliminations, but it's more elevated because he rotated late. So from here on out, Huddy has a better chance of getting points, while Leo has a tough chance of rotating, but already has gotten a few points. Some of the differences in actually getting zone and moving into zone right there. It's the tale of two cities and Leo is doing his best to survive. Someone like Cuddy who has that loadout is usually the average finish is about the top four. So let's see if Huddy on that other side of the coin could be able to hold up. He played in the FNCS solo heats and did pretty well. But Leo, now we're going to have a crazier circle as it's going to go down to the beach. So a lot of players are going to work through this warehouse. This warehouse is going to be a, a, a great opportunity for players who are shambles to work on through because they're going to have the cover. But Leo on top gets a nice finish right there with the burst AR. Looking for more hits. 36. He's kind of cooking, going, heating up right now. I got to get something in my belly before I keep using that analogy. He's going right now with 105 points. He has the flops to do the style. So if he wants to make storm rotations, he totally can. And he's sitting really nicely on height because remember, we don't know where the shockwave launcher is because Huddy, all he has is the mystical charge shotgun. Yeah, Huddy with a mythical charge is going to just be telling us that maybe that shockwave launcher is not in this game. But based off his position, he had a good chance of getting high. He's not actually going to go for it. going to be playing mid ground with a lot of mats. Nice pick there, though. He's going to be able to see low ground much more easily than Leo is all the way up top. Leo, though, can pressure and shape this lobby in whatever way or shape that he wants. Is going to be starting to run out of these hard materials, though, and people will be more inclined to actually challenge his height over and over again. While Huddy is in the fray of things, not even playing the zone, but just playing off of other people's boxes. Now, though, he's going to be up against Flo. It's a very hard elimination to get. He escapes out. Leo finally diving down, getting a little bit of mid-ground action in for himself as he comes back up to height. Still very good on materials, looking for shots in any shape, way, or form. There it is. One onto R after that. Water falling down. A crash pad hit, possibly. Ooh, uh. misses just by a little bit of a hair, but has a fob to really bring it right back. You can see the difference in two different stories. Huddy all the way box to box, still in very troublesome situations. Leo just spray spraying people freely all the way from height. We're now seeing, though, a few new names come out. Trulex all the way at low, picks up eliminations. Hyjo is chilling all the way in the back. Wash Orange is still alive right next to Stacey. No doubt, Leo wishes he had a stronger shotgun because he's been doing a lot of damage up there, peppering people with it as we see that the zone does pull back. So this is going to work in Leo's favor. Leo's going to have the opportunity to recycle and walk on a lot of used builds. And the people like Jamside, Orange, are going to have issues. Goon, because they have to go through a lot of builds as well, is going to have the pressure of the storm pushing on their backside. But now Huddy is still on the mid, doing a lot of work, only has 20 builds. He's going to have to use the power that mythical shotgun to continue to look for some refreshes but we're on board with leo who is using the best to his ability with this kit being super smart and taking out any kind of lead uh, any ooh, 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 any kind of person that's challenging even taking out the crash pads because he knows that so many people are going to try to recycle that shio but look at that down below washed orange is getting hurt so bad the storm finally catches up to him no doubt trying to eat the floppers as fast as possible now he barely squeaks on in 
but we are still continuing the story of Leo. Leo with the strong run right now. Six eliminations, but he gets hit so hard. Now he's down to it. Now he's got to retreat back to low where we see that there's so many congestion here, Shio. Now it's up to Huddy. Huddy right now has a strong opportunity to close out this lobby as Goon goes down. Leo got a little bit greedy, not taking that slurp for shot before, but now pops it all the way up to 200 effective HP in the same box as someone else who's going for the shots. There it is. A nice pickup from Dennis. How do you get the same one at the same time on the same layer? Dennis, though, is the person all the way on height who controls the entire lobby. Leo is looking for his next shot to come right in from the backside of Storm. Playing those floppers, he could get the shot off on Dennis. Almost tries to, but the crash pad saves Dennis all the way up top. Huddy's all the way down low fighting shields. Leo gets pushed down towards Huddy. Now the two player stories intertwine. They're both low on HP, but Leo is the one who ends up winning it out. Leo possibly with a back-to-back -back on the patch. Is it possible? It's almost there. He gets taken out and Dennis goes down to Leo and Storm. It's patched with the win. And look at that. Janice up on top. The uh, the reigning champ from the FNCS Chapter 2 Season 2 Invitational. Right behind him, it is Dejin with 178 points. Actually, he's tied with Janice right now. Leo the Crack is going to be in third. And hey, look at that. Benji Fishy, everyone's favorite European player in fourth. And then we have Swaps in fifth.